Hello and welcome to High School Basketball on WOSN. Alongside Dave Bowen, I'm Evan Skilleter, and tonight it's regional semis from Bowling Green. We have the Warriors of Mohawk High School and the Knights of Crestview. Let me ask you something, Dave. Does it get any better than regional action at the Stroh Center? It does not, Evan. It's great to be your wingman tonight. You're right. The Knights, the Warriors, regional semifinal action at the Stroh. Where else would you rather be? Nowhere, absolutely. So before we get started, let's talk about some keys to the game. And let's start with the Warriors. They come into tonight 23-3, and finish second in the Northern 10 Conference. What do they have to do tonight to get to a regional final? Well, keys to the game for Mohawk. First of all, they need to play through Hess. A.J. Hess, the Northern 10 Athletic Conference Player of the Year, comes as close to averaging a double-double as you can with 20 points for a game and nine rebounds. The 6'6 senior can stroke it from deep and he can post up on the block as well. He isn't their only weapon, but the Warriors need their big time player to step up in this big time game. Secondly, set it up. Mohawk is a set oriented team. Look for elbow entries with backdoor cuts and flare screens. They also like the high low action, dumping the ball down to Hess and around the basket. Crestview will need to take away the go-to options that Mohawk utilizes. And then finally, pick the right D. In reviewing film, the Warriors can bring a bevy of different looks at the defensive end. They have played games where they press full court. They play games where they run a 2-3 zone. I'm sure Coach Dunn and his staff have a defensive game plan ready to roll. If his players execute it with tenacity, they can advance to Friday night's regional championship game. Very good. And how about the Knights? They come in tonight, also three losses, 22 wins on the season, second place in the Northwest Conference. What do they need to do to get to a regional final? Yeah, the Crestview Knights have had an outstanding season. Keys for the Knights. Be quick, but don't hurry. Starting four senior guards brings experience for the Knights to recognize anything and everything that is thrown at them defensively. By being active, sharing the basketball, and executing pressure offense, the Knights just might be able to get the Warriors on their heels defensively. Keep it in front. Crestview will continue to rely on its half-court sticky man-to-man -man defense as its foundation. They gotta be cognizant of A.J. Hess, but there are other players that can get it done for the Warriors. They gotta keep them from dribble penetrating and keep them from finding open teammates. Keep the ball out of the paint and contesting all shots is the recipe for success. And then finally, Crestview needs to own the window. Overall, Crestview brings equal or bigger height and bigger and longer length to the table at every position. Being fundamental on checkouts and hitting the offensive glass will provide the Knights with an opportunity to win the board battle and win the ultimate stat, the final score on the scoreboard tonight. Good stuff, Dave. Thank you so much. We are going to step aside, but when we return, it's the Warriors, the Knights, and high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to the Stroh Center, where we are almost ready to, for tip between the Warriors of Mohawk and the Knights of Crestview in this Division Four regional semifinal. You see your officials there on the screen, Ben Kramer, Aaron Braun, and Paul Winglewich doing the duties tonight. And we are underway. Crestview fights for the opening tip. Evan Skilleter, Dave Bowen, and our entire WOSN crew looking forward to bringing you this one. It's going to be a good one, Evan. Two real quality programs. Gavin Etzler with a shot early. And Etzler with the early bucket. He's one of three Knights that average 10 points a game. And it's 2-0 early on the Laddix Jewelry scoreboard. Good start for the Knights. We see Mohawk get the ball to the elbow right there, working on their sets, being patient. Real gritty team is this Mohawk squad as we've looked at them on film. Down to the basket, shot up, no good. Taken by Kane Heyman. Now a three-pointer on the way. That is off the back, no good. Fight for the board, and it's last touched by Crestview. The Knights are a team that can definitely knock it down from outside. They have some guys that put up high percentage numbers from outside. You're right. Gavin Etzler shoots 49% behind the arc, as does Nate Lickley. They both are tied for leading in that, that category. 49% from three, you'll take that any day. Don't forget about Isaac Klein coming off the bench. He's only shot 18 of them, but he's made 10. Yeah, taking advantage of his opportunities. Turnovers, Knights in transition. 
And the Knights go up. That one's blocked by Hess. Taken to the basket by Mitch Temple. So Crestview basketball underneath. Mitch Temple penetrating, going deep. We see it on the carry insurance replay. In the district championship game, the second half, Mitch Temple was the straw that stirred the proverbial drink, penetrating a lot, scoring 17 points in that contest. Hetzler had that one knocked away from him, so it stays with Crestview underneath, much to the chagrin of A.J. Hess. Hess, a 6'6'' senior, the Northern 10 Player of the Year. Very impressive recognition for Hess. Again, 20 points, nine boards a game. You can see why he earned that honor. Pass over the head of Sheets. Here comes Hess the other way. Hess spins, goes up over the head of Etzler. Can't finish, gets his own rebound, can't hit the follow-up, but the third also no good. Uses all the real estate up there, but doesn't fall. The proverbial lid. Hunter with the penetration. Hunter floats in the air. He can't finish, and another rebound goes out of bounds. Last touch by Mohawk. So in the early going already, we see Crestview, that pressure offense. They're really attacking uh, the defense of Mohawk and the rim here with 6.20 to go in the first canto. Here's Hunter up top. Etzler off the screen, but it's an illegal one. The shot goes in, but we'll have an offensive foul called against 33, Ren Sheets. Flex look under out of bounds, and you're right, Ren Sheets with the illegal screen. The first call of the game there by the officiating crew. Turns the ball back over to Mohawk. Right here come the Warriors. Boomer Cleveland takes it over half court. Now a three on the way from Braden Chester. He got it. Lickley tried to come up through the middle and get a deflection, and as a result, he left his man wide open. Chester buries it, and we see the full court pressure from Mohawk. Knight's able to get it across. Lick leader Sheets. Sheets draws the foul. Good patience by him under the basket. And that was what I was really interested to see what Mohawk would do after a made field goal. Again, in their district championship game, as we see the replay, nice pass by Lickley. And Sheets drawing the foul. In their district championship game against Hopewell Loudon, they played straight 2-3 zone the whole contest. Really respected Hopewell Loudon's ability to get the ball down the floor. Right now, they are showing full court pressure on a made shot. And uh, Crestview is able to take advantage of it that time. But Sheets has got to convert the free throws. Misses that first one. And our free throws tonight sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. And it's split by Sheets. Knights tie the score at three. Sheets with his first point of the night. Elbow entry again, look for the back cut. Flare screen for Cleveland. And then up through the elevator screen, as we call it. We've got an illegal screen on A.J. Hess. So Hess tacked with his first foul, asking the referee for an explanation. Either so, way. So both 6'6 six, six players for Crestview and Mohawk in uh, Sheets and Hess pick up a personal foul and they're only going both on the illegal screens. Temple gives it to Sheets. Now Hunter up top. Etzler open look at three. That one's too long, but an offensive board as Temple tracks it down. 5.15 to go in the first quarter. 3-3 three, three. and this regional semifinal winner takes on Marion Local. Good Lickley. solid man-to-man -man defense by Mohawk. Get, they get it into Sheets. Sheets nowhere to go, but he finds Hunter and a great pass and a nice finish at the rim. Yeah, Sheets has shown, shown that ability all season long, Evan, to find the open man when he draws two. Does so right there. Carson Hunter kisses it off the window for the bucket. Back to work. Go the Warrior offense. This is Braden Chester. Hands it to Heyman. Pardon me, that's Cleveland. Yeah, Boomer Cleveland. I mean, is that Boomer Cleveland point guard for Mohawk or second baseman for the Cleveland Guardians? I love that name. Fantastic name, <laughs> no doubt. Here's a shot. It's just a two, and it goes. Kane Heyman with the, with the two-point field goal. And Etzler with the nice dump off as Lickley finishes. Crestview does what you want to do when you're being pressed. If you want to attack that pressure, they get Get the ball to the 10 and score. Lickley with the field goal. Here's Cleveland. Dribbles inside against Sheets. Now kicks it out. Heyman. Crestview switching all screens. Keep the ball in front. Cleveland able to penetrate, though. 
pass goes out of bounds. Last touch by Mohawk. So back to Crestview as we've had our first sub of the game. And that's Jarrett Harding checking into the game. Yeah, Jarrett Harding coming off the bench. has been one of the most improved players along with Carson Hunter, who he comes in for, for the Crestview Knights. Temple takes it across the timeline. Lickley gives it back to Temple, has some space inside, can't finish. Jarrett Harding, though, grabs the rebound, making an immediate impact. But the ball falls to the hands of Heyman. Yeah, turnover on the Knights. Pass for three. That's off the front, no good. And two rebounds off the bench right away for Jarrett Harding. AJ has a good look there. Crestview doesn't want to allow that too often. He'll score. How about the impact that Jarrett Harding has made coming into this game? Two rebounds and then passes that draws a foul. Yeah, we're going to see it on the carry insurance replay. Harding gives it up to Ren Sheets, who draws the foul. You're right, and Harding has done that, especially the second half of the season. When he comes in the game, he gives his team a lift. And as you said, he's doing it at both ends right now. First free throw, no good. That's a Lee's Famous Recipe chicken free throw. Lee's Famous Recipe chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe chicken, home style, happens here. Ren Sheets, the, the 6'6 sophomore post player, 67% free throw. Needs this one to go 50% on the evening. Two for four thus far. Now Sheets will take a seat replaced by Nasir Easterling. Nasir Easterling gave Crestview a real nice bounce in the second quarter when they were down 10 against Audeville in the district championship. Helped them maintain the sea, if you will, the waters until they could get their feet under them and come back for that tremendous double overtime victory versus the Big Green. 8-5 Crestview leads on the Laudix Jewelry scoreboard. Here's Boomer Cleveland. Crestview switches the screen as Cleveland goes back the other way. And as he tries to save it, it goes out. Crestview takes it back. Now Boomer Cleveland, he has a turnover there, Evan, but I've been very impressed with how he runs the show for Mohawk. Gets him in what they want to do with their sets. Just unfortunate turnover on that particular possession, but very been very impressed with him. Mitch Temple brings it down. He's guarded by Heyman. Swung around. Look for a double screen here for Temple. Temple back out to Lickley. That three no good. Rebound pulled in by Cleveland. That's Heyman, excuse me. Now Hunter Haynes gets things set up for Mohawk. Finds Zayden Fry. See that interchange uh, work in the paint by Mohawk. Looking for the high-low for Hess. Got him down on the block now. Inside, left-handed layup, no good. Easterling grabs the rebound off the Heyman miss. Temple stops, now gets inside, goes up as he steps around the defender, not able to finish as Hanman, or Hanum, excuse me, grabs the rebound. Now Heyman the other way. Heyman kicks it out. And a nice drive to the basket, but the finger roll, no good. Ball out, last touch by Nate Lickley. Carson Hunter checks back in. Lickley will get a breather. Bryce Hannum penetrates right there. He did that very effectively against Hopewell Loudon in the district championship game. Came away with 14 points against the Chieftains. Hit two big free throws at the end of that game to seal the deal for Mohawk and get them here to the Stroh Center for regional semifinal action. Here's Hess up top trying to get something going. Hunter Haynes now. Every time Haynes catches the ball, looks like he kind of shuffles a foot. Referees haven't called it yet. Elbow entry, look for the back door, flare screen, but nobody's set the screen. There he goes. Hannum with a tough shot so far. Every time Mohawk's gotten inside, Crestview's made it really tough for them to get a good look. There's a turnover. A.J. Hess picks it up as the pass is too low. Yeah, Carson Hunter leads Crestview with assists with 122, but on that particular uh, penetration move, the ball is at Easterling's legs. He's unable to come up with a turnover on the Knights. Hess dribbles inside. Easterling stops the penetration, and now Hunter takes it away. Carson Hunter over to Etzler. Good transition defense as Mohawk gets in front, but Hunter gets to the basket. Hess blocks it, 
And it's picked up by Hunter Haynes. Real good play by A.J. Hess to rotate over. Carson Hunter thought he had a penetration lane. Well, he did, but A.J. Hess had the swat. Mohawk basketball. Now Hannum gets things going for Mohawk. Grass playing for the last shot, 30 seconds on the clock. 8-5, Cressy leads on the Loudix Jewelry scoreboard. And then I believe at the beginning of the second quarter, Mohawk's going to have possession, so a real good chance to build some momentum here at the end of the first quarter, first possession of the second. Hannum sends it inside, and that's Zayden Fry with the basket. Off the roll, four on the clock. Here's Hunter. He finds Harding. Harding's three is short, and that one won't count. So your final, or your score, excuse me, after the first quarter, Crestview eight, Mohawk seven, as we step aside. Second quarter coming up after this on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South St. Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at loudix.com. Welcome back to the Stroh Center as you get a look at the Region 14 bracket. Marion Local knocking off Patrick Henry, 56-42 in the game before this one. To move on to the regional final, that'll be March 10th at 7 p.m. Crestview and Mohawk playing for a chance at that regional title. Crestview leading 8-7 on that scoreboard as you take a look at the Warriors. Coached by Paul Dunn, 23-3 this season. Finished second in the Northern 10 Conference. Crestview coached by Doug Etzler, 22 and three this season. And a second place finish in the Northwest Conference. Almost first place. Doug, we had that game are on WOSN. It just didn't go Crestview's way. A shot at the buzzer, rattled in and out. Great game, knew it would come down to that between those two outstanding programs. The Bearcats coached by Kevin Sensiball. At the quarter break, I'm sure both coaches were talking about settling down and limiting turnovers as we see Hannum hit a nice baseline jumper right there. In that first quarter, Crestview had four turnovers, Mohawk five, not the pace you want to be on. Mohawk switches the screen, Hess jumps out on Etzler, now Hunter up top to Jarrett Harding. Now Etzler gets inside, goes up, ball was tipped. Rebound in the hands of Cleveland. Cleveland's going to go as deep as he can. There's the dribble drive in the dish. It's a good play, but the finish not there. Braden Chester missing. Now Lickley up to Etzler. Harding taking his time, not guarded terribly closely. Now Etzler goes inside, floats it up, floats it in. Nice penetration again. Crestview's been able to get in the gaps. It's just been a matter of finishing or not. Gavin Etzler does so right there. Elbow entry, backdoor cut, flare screen for Cleveland. Up through the elevator comes Heyman attacking the rim. Heyman off balance, can't hit. And ultimately Harding grabbed the rebound and he was fouled. I'll tell you what, I know you said it in the first quarter, but Jarrett Harding off the bench has provided a much needed spark for Crestview. Absolutely right. He's, he's been around the ball wherever it's been at both ends of the floor. As you said, a spark. Nice spark plug for Crestview. Opportunity now with what he's done to execute on offense and extend this lead that they have by one right now. Etzler will take a break. As Crestview gets to work offensively. Sheets, good position underneath. Nowhere to go though, and he passes it away. Good defense from Hess. Right there with Hess having his arms extended over Sheets. I'm sure Coach Etzler would have liked to seen Red go right up through that because Hess was not vertical at all. Hess wins that battle. We've seen Sheets at the free throw line quite a bit tonight. I'd like to see two more for Crestview, but nonetheless, it's back to Mohawk. Here's Heyman. Heyman taking his time. There's the interchange action where they look to get Hess down on the block. They don't find him there. Hess up top. Hess inside, now kicks it out. Connor Sheets in the game, now guarding Hess. Cleveland pulls up, shot no good. And guess who? Yeah, <laughs> number 11, Jared Harding with the rebound. Hunter now, plenty of space, gets all the way to the block. 
Now kicks it out. Three on the way. Bang! Nate Lickley shoots 49% behind the arc. Set a new school record for Crestview this year. Ten threes in a game, and Mohawk's going to call timeout. It's a Metzger Financial Services timeout as Crestview back to within two, 12-10, right here on WOSN. Tonight's instant replay sponsor is Carey Insurance in Grover Hill. Call or stop by to see if we can assist you with your insurance needs. Welcome back. A quick correction from the break we just had. 13-9 Crestview leads. They gave the three to the wrong team on the scoreboard here. They have it fixed. And so Crestview with a four-point lead on the Loudix Jewelry scoreboard. Coach Dunn takes that timeout. We've, Crestview fans have seen that a lot this year. Hess with the wide open look. Hess can't hit, rebound, tipped by Lickley into the hands of Hunter. Where I'm going is when Lickley hits the three, a lot of teams call timeout because they want to guard him almost to face principles. They don't want to let him get started. Sheets lost the handle. It was knocked away by Heyman. Now look at the hustle, and that would be out of bounds. Last touch by the Warriors, but good hustle there as Heyman jumped on the ground. Absolutely great hustle by Mohawk right there. They come up without the basketball because of an unfortunate bounce. It goes back to Crestview, but as far as a 50-50 ball, I got to give that one to Mohawk. Crestview was reaching, Mohawk was diving. Backdoor cut, Lickley gets to the rim and goes up and under. Nice move by Nate Lickley. Running the back door play that we've seen for years. You got to play good defense for that to work. I know that sounds like an oxymoron. We gave up a backup, but when you play good pressure defense, sometimes you're susceptible to that, and it happened right there. Deep three off glass and in. Hunter Haynes knocks it down. He's second on the team from behind the arc, 35%. The bank was open. Crestview had a big one like that against Ottaville by Nate Lickley at bank. Got him going. We'll see if that does the same for Mohawk here as we reach the halfway point of the second quarter. Crestview still on top by three. Hunter gets the pass and a nice smooth gather and finish with the left. Absolutely very smooth. Silky smooth for Carson Hunter there. Crestview's lead out to five now. Here's Cleveland. He just pulls up for three and misses everything. And again, it's a little deceiving for high school players on this college floor. A boomer was clearly behind the college three-pointer. The white line around the arc, that's the high school level. But again, players feel and sense the arc. They don't look for it. And right now, you're going with the first contrast. And he shot that one from way deep. Crestview back to work offensively. Inside goes Temple and a foul. So again, throughout this first half, Crestview has been able to penetrate the ba basketball at will. And in this situation, Mitch Temple is going to go to the free throw line and shoot two. Metzger Financial Services free throws. Metzger Financial Services helping you play in your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. First free throw good from Mitch Temple, the 6'2 senior. Shoots 71% from the line, had 17 points in that district championship game. None more important than the last two to put the Knights up 63-61 and garner the win. Missed the second and then he fouls. It'll be the second team foul against Crestview. Into the game checks to Isaac Klein. Klein another dangerous three-point shooter if he gets open. Yeah. Isaac Klein has been very opportunistic with his go. looks from three. Mohawk to the wing with Heyman. Hess came off the screen, now gets the basketball. Dribbles to his left. He likes that spin back to his right. Hasn't been able to hit anything off of it yet as Etzler grabs the rebound. Great wall up by Ren Sheets. Makes it tough. Pass goes inside. Sheets almost goes out, but tosses it out to Hunter. A.J. has real strong in there. The younger Sheets bouncing off of him a little bit. They go back in for Sheets, and he has it stripped away. Nice. Credit Heyman with the steal. Nice play by Kane Heyman. Heyman outside, deep three. That's no good. Another one of those deep ones. That time Hunter Haynes with the attempt. 
Sheets are up top. They really want to get that ball inside. Sheets back out to Hunter. Hunter. Hetzler, he's going to try a deep one. That one's good. Bringing rain. He gets a lot of arc on that one, but dynamite from distance is Gavin Etzler. He shoots 49% behind the arc. Gives Crestview now a nine-point lead. Mohawk needs to get something going here. Just over two minutes to go in the half, and a turnover and a timeout by Crestview. Great hustle there by Ike Klein. The 50-50 ball goes Crestview's way, and Coach Etzler calls the TO to maintain possession. A Metzger Financial Services timeout as we step aside. Crestview leads 21-12 on WOSN. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you play in your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Timeout taken there by Crestview as they fought for a loose ball. Crestview right now with a lot of momentum. A lot, of mo Bowen. a lot of momentum. They go nine deep in their lineup. They have right now Mohawk, a little shorter bench. They go around seven. And again, we have a penetration and a foul occurring off of that penetration on the Warriors. It's drawn by Jarrett Harding. Now Klein will take a seat. Hetzler will send this inbounds right from the end of the Shrove Center logo. Temple. Now Etzler is going to try another deep one. That's good. And a foul while the ball was in the air. The three should count. See what the referees have to say. Aaron Braun and Ben Kramer talking about it. Good three-pointer. We see the replay. Harding to Etzler. Shoots it from deep. And I think the foul, did you pick up who it's on? Yeah, Evan? they called it on Easterling. So Nasir Easterling, again, a hustle foul, looking to get to the offensive glass. Coach Etzler will take that any day of the week, but no offensive glass needed as Etzler doesn't touch the rim. Again, that high arcing three, nothing but the bottom of the net. And a correction, if you keep it score at home, it's the first foul on Mitch Temple rather than Nasir Easterling. Okay. Either way, team Foul number three for the Knights with 119 to go in the first half. Ball sent out to Braden Chester. Big possession for the Warriors right now. They're entering a little bit of the danger zone. We go Kenny Loggins on you, Evan. Mm -hmm. Little top gun action. Now a foul. Be number four against Crestview, so plenty to give in the half. We're going to have Hunter and Ren Sheets come back in. So Crestview's just starting to come at Mohawk, Mohawk in waves. Ball will be sent in by Chester under the basket. And that's dribbled off somebody's foot. It's off of Hunter. I like the fake by Hannum again in the district championship game. He was very effective penetrating to the basket. Second team. Northern 10 selection is one Bryce Hannum. Off the screen, three in the air. Parker off the glass, no good. Zayden Fry skies for the rebound, but Sheets blocks the after attempt. Here come the Knights in transition. Lickley inside. Here's Etzler. Knights back it all the way out. With Hess out of the game, it would be a great idea for Crestview to look for Sheets inside. He's got a mismatch. Hunter outside, Lickley three, it's no good. Hunter grabs the rebound, goes to Sheets, and the quick bucket off the glass. Again, Carson Hunter has just been a senior who has improved so much when he doesn't have the ball in his hands. Gets the offensive rebound right there, another assist. He's the team leader in that category. Give the bucket to Sheets and the Crestview faithful from Ren and Convoy. They are up and cheering on the Knights right now. Ball with Zayden Fry, three on the clock, three in the air. Off the front, no good, and the buzzer sounds. Crestview with a commanding 26 to 12 lead at the half. We'll step aside, some halftime adjustments coming up after this on WOSN. Our halftime adjustments are presented by Lox Chiropractic and Weight Loss. Lox Chiropractic and Weight Loss offers area residents good health through chiropractic care. Welcome back to BGSU, where Crestview has a 26 
to 12 lead over the Mohawk Warriors. Evan Skilleter, Dave Bone with you tonight. And Dave, let's talk about those halftime adjustments. Yeah, if you're Coach Dunn with the Mohawk, you're going to talk about our defensive shell principles to begin with. We've given up way too much penetration to Crestview. We've got to do a better job of keeping them out of the paint and contesting every shot and then flipping the grid offensively. Mohawk, they can't make up this deficit right away. They've got to go possession by possession, look for great shot selection, reverse the basketball, get up on the three-point line, or get the ball inside off of penetration, and they've got to get A.J. Hess going. He has not scored in the first half in this game thus far. He needs to get things rolling. If you're Crestview, Coach Doug Etzler, he's talking about let's be solid, gentlemen. No flash. Flash gets you no cash at the regional level. We want to be solid. We want to continue to work real hard. We don't want to open the door, even a little crack, and give Mohawk an opportunity to get back in this game. Let's get after it, gentlemen. Let's have two great quarters and put ourselves in position to compete for a regional championship on Friday night. And it's Gavin Etzler leading the way for Cressy with 10 points, three rebounds, two assists, having a great night. Working on getting the scoreboard sorted out here. Eight minutes on the clock, and the second half is underway. Crestview starts with the basketball. Down comes Mitch Temple. Obviously, if you're Mohawk, you want a great defensive possession. If you're Crestview, you want to score and set tone, and they do so right there. Ren Sheets on the give and go from Mitch Temple. Sheets now with six points. Mohawk back to work. A.J. has no points yet. Averages 20. Entry pass. This is Bryce Hannum. Now outside. Open look for three. That one's good. Boomer Cleveland from deep. Shoots 31% behind the arc. Great offensive set for Mohawk right there. Entry pass tipped away by Hess. It'll stay with Crestview underneath. And that was another one from that three-point line from college range, you see the taped makeshift line here in Bowling Green. Nice reversal action. They didn't settle or look for a quick shot. They looked for a quality shot and got it done. And here's a turnover. And an easy layup at the other end. That's Bryce Hannum. Hannum with four points now. So as coaches, we always talk about the first four minutes of the game and the first four minutes of the third quarter. Mohawk has established themselves a little bit here at the beginning of the third. Crestview needs a solid possession. Temple gives to Hunter and gets it back. He'll back it out. Crestview will get something going here. After a couple baskets, you think they want to slow down a little bit, get a good look. Lickley, Hunter. Sheets trying to post up. Now it gets out of the paint. They go inside. Lost the handle, but gets it back. It's going to go up and under. Grand Sheets with a nice move there. Good defense by A.J. Hess. Just better offense by Ren Sheets. He fumbled it a little bit, but then recovered in a nice reverse layup. Make it eight points for Sheets. Inside they go. Hannum again with the basket. There's that interchange underneath. Hannum finds himself open. They get him the basketball. He finishes at the rim. Here's Lickley. Hunter. And he's bumped from behind. Shot no good, but some Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws coming up for Mitch Temple. Nice curl cut coming across the face of the basket. Mitch Temple gets the defense on his back, pulls up, and as you said, gets the contact from behind. Temple, the Northwest Conference honorable mention selection. Gavin Etzler was first team, and Nate Lickley second team, and Ren Sheets first team for Crestview. Temple, a 70% free throw shooter. Gets them both to go. 32-19 on the Laddox Jewelry scoreboard. Crestview with the lead, but Mohawks starting to come into their own on offense. Inside they go, floater up in the air, that goes. Braden Chester somehow finding the bottom of the net. Well, he found the bottom of the net because he was patient. He got in the paint and didn't get rattled and found himself able to get a nice look there and scores. Teardropping. Now a foul as Temple tries to go right and goes right into Kane Heyman. So I do like the defensive intensity from Mohawk here at the beginning of the third quarter. Much better than the first half. 
they are really moving their feet much better and trying to contest everything and keep the ball from being penetrated. Lickley, skip pass, Hunter wide open. Misses everything, but Lickley gets the rebound and puts it back. Carson Hunter's going to say that was a pass the whole way, Absolutely. Evan. Give me another assist. Not going to count that way, though, on the scorebook. 34-21, <laughs> and now an offensive foul. A.J. Hess with the illegal screen. So, again, it's a tough night thus far for A.J. Hess. The referee saying he just stuck his arm out there on his way to the rim. They'll let you be physical, but as you said, he stuck a chicken wing out there. Back door cut, not there. Back up to Temple, he dribbles right, goes all the way to the glass, doesn't hit. Fighting for the rebound, Hess ends up with it, and it's knocked away by Crestview. It'll stay with Mohawk. We'll have to go the length of the floor. I like A.J. Hess's tenacity right there. He, no, he's not scoring, but he really hit the defensive boards hard. Makes that play for Mohawk. They've got the basketball. Here's Heyman off the screen, gets to the rack, and how about that layup as he spins it off the glass and in. Yeah, Kane Heyman has really made his presence known tonight as well. That was a real nice penetration move. No help defense for Crestview. He takes advantage of the opportunity. Sheets. Hunter was open, but he passed it just a bit late, although Temple gets it back. Lickley to Etzler. Sheets has good position underneath, but they yeah, go he's up got top. a mismatch. They needed to look for him there, missed him. And Temple going to be fouled by Hess. That'll be number three against AJ. So Coach Dunn has a decision, but he doesn't. You know, three fouls usually you might think about sitting your, your star player down a little bit, but down 11, he can't afford to do that. He's got to play. Absolutely. Jarrett Harding checks into the game for Cressy. He had a big first half. Harding with three rebounds and a lot of hustle plays for the Knights. In that first half, he goes inside the sheets. Temple off the cut, left-handed layup, no good. Hess has to be careful underneath. Ball eventually finds the hands of Heyman. Heyman quickly down the right side. What are we gonna get, a block? They get the charge. Nate Lickley, Nate Lickley leads Crestview in the charge department with 10, make it number 11. We're gonna see it on the carry insurance replay. Shuffles his feet to the right and takes that shoulder right in the sternum. That's a good call, Evan. Charge number 11 for Lickley on the year. He gets most of his charges, as do most players, rotating over defensively and helping someone else. But on that one, he does it all on his own and gets the call on this particular occasion. So the Knights get it back with 3.56 to go in the third quarter. They lead 34-23 on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. See if Coach Essler looks to get the ball inside the sheets again to try and do some work, have Hess pick up his fourth foul. Rotating the basketball, good reversal. Lickley came off the screen, nothing there. They go inside the sheets. Sheets backs his way down, might as well attack the guy with three fouls. Instead, he sends it out, and the three goes. Good things happen inside out action. Sheets with the ball in the block, kicks it out to the reversal, just like you and I when we were kids in the driveway. That's right. The rebounder kicking it out to you. You got your feet set. Nate Lickley does the job. That's a deep three. It's no good. Etzler grabs the rebound. Press view up 14. Why not? That one's no good, but the offensive board put back good. Jarrett Harding earned himself that basket. And we're going to have a timeout from Mohawk down 16. As you said, Jarrett Harding hits the glass. The carry insurance replay, Harding all in one motion off the glass. You're watching regional semifinal basketball action D4 style on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight is presented by Lodix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at Lodix.com. The owner and proprietor of Lodix Insurance, one Mike Lickley. Proud to see that scoreboard going where it is right now as his son Nathan Lickley hits that last three. Now the Warriors back to work offensively. Nowhere to go so far with the basketball. 
Pass it outside, Boomer Cleveland. Boomer still nowhere to go as the Knights switch the screen. Easterling now matched up with Cleveland. Yeah, Boomer's been taking care of the rock out there. The honorable mention, Northern 10 Athletic Conference player. We go inside, little miscommunication from the Crestview defense and Hannum takes advantage. You're right. Mohawk gets a nice possession out of the timeout and Coach Etzler uh, hoping that they continue action. They'll be looking at the film on that one because you're right, he was wide open. And now Hess grabs the ball from Harding and the jump ball gives it back to Mohawk. A.J. Hess does a nice job when Jared Harding commits the Cardinal sin. Never put the basketball above your head. You lose your strength. A.J. Hess takes advantage of the opportunity. Turnover on the Knights, Mohawk basketball. Bringing it down is Boomer Cleveland. Cleveland hands to Fry. Hess posting up inside. Easterling trying to push him off the block, and he does. Hess inside, but passes right to Carson Hunter. He's wearing the wrong jersey, though. Well, that high-low action, Mohawk likes to run that, but Crestview had it sniffed out from their scouting report. Defend, they defend it nicely. Ball in the corner with Harding. He finds Hunter underneath and an easy layup. Jarrett Harding getting it done in the assist column now. Yes, and Mohawk changed their defensive philosophy looking to trap, but unfortunately not a hard trap on Harding. He's able to find Hunter wide open under the basket. 41-25 now, 120 to go. Inside and the ball knocked away. Good defense from Easterling. Good defense, Zayden Fry has that ability to get to the rack and he can jump. He's successful in the sport of track. But right there, good defense by Easterling. Lickley got his man in the air but misses as he sidesteps. Here's Hannum, Hannum to the rack and draws the foul. Some Lees free throws coming up here. First foul of the half on Crestview, draws some sarcastic applause from the Mohawk fans behind us as you get a look at the replay. Yeah, the carry insurance replay. I've been impressed with Bryce Hannum tonight and throughout uh, the scouting that I've done on the Mohawk Warriors, he loves to attack the rack, no fear. And in that situation, with his pressure offense, the 6'3 senior wins the battle, goes to the free throw line where he's a 57% free throw shooter, but he nailed that first one. See if he can get this one as well to cut that lead that the Knights possess right now. Second one no good, but Crestview fighting for the rebound, fighting for, with each other. Exactly, Easterling and Harding. Again, you want to come down with that if you're Coach Etzler, obviously, but the guys are hustling, trying to get, a, get that rebound right there. Ball outside, quick trigger, no good. Offensive rebound, Hannum outside, Heyman. Now hand him again, he backs his way in, pass to the corner. Here's Heyman, go back it out, 38 on the clock. Heyman over to Chester, that shot no good. Chester almost gets the offensive rebound, but instead it's pulled in by Harding. Harding took a seat and get a call yet? Yeah, I think it's out of bounds on the kick for uh, the Warriors, so it's going to be Crestview basketball underneath, 24 seconds, rotational, um, some rotations occurring, some substitutes for Crestview, and we'll see what they do. If they look for a quick hit off the under out of bounds set, and if not, they'll bring it out, and I bet they play for the last shot of the quarter, Evan. All in for Temple. He's just going to take it to the rack. He goes up, and he's going to shoot two Lee's famous recipe, chicken free throws with 19 seconds on the clock, and that's foul number seven against the Warriors as you take a look at the carry insurance replay. Yeah, Temple attacking the rack, and, and Hannum just giving up the personal right there to send Temple to the line. You know, this Mohawk team, they average 63 offensively, 44 defensively. Crestview has really done a number on them. They're not going to come close to that offensive average. Crestview at 57 offensively and 44 at the defensive end. They got a ways to go, too. Free throw good. The Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw. Lee's in Lima, Wild Park, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken home style happens here. Coming out of the free throw situation, Crestview goes to their 1-3-1 defense to get a, a shot up. 
There's a foul, so that's number seven. And that will send Temple to the line for a one and one. With four so, on the clock. Yeah, tough foul situation right there for Mohawk. Crespio, as I said, out of that transition from the free throw, they show their 1-3-1 one, one defense. The Mohawk uh, Warriors take a shot right there. I believe it was Cleveland, and they miss. And then Temple gets fouled, trying to break out. They might have got a layup, so maybe the foul's not a bad thing. But Temple's got to make both of them to make that foul hurt. Point number five for Mitch Temple. Some chicken sounds good. What do you like to get at Lee's? Well, you know what? Uh, that's a great point. I, I visited the Delphus location for the first time this winter when I went over to watch uh, Jefferson and uh, Wayne Trace play in girls basketball, do a little scouting, and uh, I loved it. I went with your basic chicken fingers. There you go. That shot no good. Almost falls, but that does it for the third quarter. Crestview on top of the Mohawk Warriors, 44-26, one quarter to play. And we'll have it for you right here on WOSN after this. Tonight's instant replay sponsor is Carry Insurance in Grover Hill. Call or stop by to see if we can assist you with your insurance needs. Take a look at the upcoming broadcasts on WOSN. Canton Central Catholic and Ottawa Glandorf for big regional semifinal. Lutheran West and Ottawa Glandorf regional semi. After that, my apologies. Thursday, a couple games. Games all week, really, right here in the Stroh Center as the ball taken away by Mohawk. And almost a violation, but they get it to the corner. Inside they go, and up and in. That first game, by the way, Wayne Trace against Canton, Central Catholic. So Mohawk gets the first two points here in the fourth quarter, but Crestview has won every quarter. They go inside the sheets right there. Eight to seven the first quarter. They won the second, 18 to five. They won the third, 18 to 14 to extend this lead to 18, being the hot number right now early in the fourth quarter. A.J. Hess still on the bench for Mohawk as they try to get going without their leading scorer. Nice pass inside, but Sheets right there on defense. Yeah, real good defensive possession for Crestview. Saran wrap defense, and there's a block for Sheets. He leads Crestview in that category. 47 on the year, make that 48. Well, I like what he did there too, Davis. You know, he was beat, but he knew he had the length, so he didn't try too hard to get back into position. Sometimes, as we take a look here, sometimes when you try to get back into position, you actually end up fouling, but he just let that length do the work for him. Great point, Evan. Three-pointer no good from Braden Chester. Crestview coming the other way. Look at that pass and the reverse layup at the other end. Lickley with the basket. Another great assist by Carson Hunter. He gets deep and then finds his teammate. Big three, the answer knocked in there by Kane Heyman. Heyman shoots 53% behind the arc. Hasn't shot many of them, but man, when he does, he's effective. We see it right there. Sheets inside, spins over that back shoulder. Hannum with the rebound. Etzler snags it away and saves it. Lickley. Nice hustle play. That's a 50-50 ball. You got to win those at this level of tournament. Hetzler thought about a deep three, but thought better of it. That's the coach's son right there saying, you know, we, we can shoot this, but running the clock a little bit and getting passing up good for great is what we want to look for right now. I think there's a half smile, around, smile on Doug Etzler's face over there, but I don't know if he loved that one. Offensive rebound, though, second attempt off to the left. Mohawk fans chanting air ball, still hit the backboard. I don't know, we'll have to look <laughs> at the rule book on that. Deep three here at the other end, that's no good. And again, Mohawk keeps taking those shots from behind that college three line. You have to wonder, that's kind of playing a factor and, and getting in their heads. Yeah, as a shooter, you just go by feel where that, that line is. And again, that, that contrast, you can't help but just sense that's where it's at. But it, in reality, that's not the case. Yeah. But if you're Gavin Etzler, hey. You shoot it from wherever. Yes, exactly. Etzler with the corner three. He's up to 17 points. Sorry, that's 13 points for Gavin Etzler. I think we might have got away with a walk right there. Possibly a couple. Doesn't matter. His two points awarded to Kane Heyman and a Metzger Financial Services timeout taken by Mohawk as they trail 51-33. It's a full timeout with 5.04 to go. We'll be back after this on WOSN. 
Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Dave, spring right around the corner, and it's time to spring to life with WOSN and TV44. Our annual spring funding campaign is underway now. Please partner with us by giving a financial donation in any amount. Our campaign goal is $50,000 by Mother's Day. Donate online at WTLW.com slash donate. Coach Dunn uses that timeout to give his charges a little bit of advice and also get Hess back in the game. He was at the scores table. So if Mohawk's going to make a run, it's got to happen right now. Hess still with no points in this one. That three is short. But the offensive rebound right now, it seems like Mohawk's dejected. They're just kind of watching the ball as it floats up in the air, and Crestview takes advantage. Yeah, they're trying to trap a little bit, but as a result, they have no rebounding action. Connor Sheets right there collects that one and scores for Crestview. Ball knocked away, last touched by Crestview. 420 on the clock. I mentioned spring, my goodness. The basketball season, for me, I say this every year, it went so quickly. It's my favorite time of year. I always look or don't, I don't look forward to the end. And now, as we sit here at the Stroh Center, it's just a couple weeks away. Exactly. It's hard to believe state tournament next week. And before you know it, they'll be out there on the diamond and on the track getting after it with spring sports. Still some work to be done for a couple teams, though, as that one's off the glass and in. Boomer Cleveland with the basket. Yep. He's up to five points. Second leading score for Mohawk at 11 points per game. Crestview with the lead and the basketball. The luxury of being patient here. The ball goes inside to Connor Sheets, and Connor scores his first bucket as he comes off the bench. Yeah, good strength there by number 34, able to work his way around Hess, and then Hess tried to block it from behind, but Sheets able to finish. Good wall up right there. Good defense inside. Hess can't finish. Sheets grabs the rebound, and a foul called. That'll be against Bryce Hannum. Number four against Hannum. We're going to walk down to the other end, 94 feet away from the basket. Well, take away your 15. That would be, what, 81? So Connor Sheets is going to go to the free throw line. Only 10 attempts this year from the line for Connor Sheets as he will have at least one Mets. Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw. Hess grabs the rebound, Mohawk. The other way, Cleveland. They've got to get to work very quickly, trailing by 20 and a foul on the shot. Really nice job there by Cleveland using his body to draw some contact and get those Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws. Nice crossover dribble, attacks Temple. We see it on the carry insurance replay. Here he comes. Temple just tries to keep his hands off, but the body foul's committed. Cleveland goes to the line where he shoots 69% from the charity strike. Into the game checks Isaac Klein as Lickley takes a seat to a nice ovation from the Crestview faithful. Lickley with 14 points tonight. Second free throw goes. 55-36 now the score on the Lodix Jewelry scoreboard. Crestview has just played very well tonight in order to extend this lead. They were Both teams had some jitters early on, turnovers in the first quarter, but they settled down. Crestview, they're familiar with the Stroh Center, regional championship in 14, a regional runner-up in 18, a regional championship in 19. I'm sure a lot of these players out on the floor were elementary and middle school students, a couple of high school students possibly at that time dreaming about doing what they're doing right now, playing at the Stroh. A tough matchup after this as they'll have Marion Local, a team with so much size. 6'8", six, 6'6", six, six. a lot of good athletes, and now a foul. Yeah, I've been fortunate to have Marion Local on WOSN, WOSN against Fort Recovery in the regular season, and then against St. John's in the regular season finale. Just an outstanding program. Coach Guttemuller does an outstanding job down there at Marion Local. And let's face it, they know how to win down there. They I think sure they do, do a pretty good job with their football program and volleyball. Volleyball, yeah. Spring yep. sports. 
two Lee's free throws good from Kellen Putnam. And two and a half minutes to play. Three up in the air, no good. Temple grabs the rebound and rips it away. I think the last time Crestview and Marion Local faced off in tournament action would go all the way back to 2003 in the state championship game where Marion Local came away with a W mm. there. Good fact from the ever genius Dave Bowen. Whoa. <laughs> Be careful about going there, Evan. <laughs> but that was Coach Jeremy Best's first year at Crestview. Coach Keith Westrich, I believe, was the coach at Marion Local at that time. Bryce Hannum, in the meantime, with his fifth foul, he will check out of this game, the 6'3 senior. Now Braden Chester checks in for Mohawk. And Hess still in the game, still scoreless. The 6'6 senior. Average 20 points per game, and now Etzler will take a seat. He's replaced by Drew Nielsen. Drew Nielsen, the senior, replacing fellow senior Gavin Etzler. And Wesson Ludwig, a senior for Crestview, coming in for fellow senior Mitch Temple. So Mohawk trailing by 23 here. Ball inside, now outside. And a foul on the crown. That shot won't count. It was taken by Zayden Fry. But instead, they'll have a foul on Isaac Klein first. Stay tuned after the game for our Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner. A lot of players to choose from. A lot of hustle out there for Crestview tonight. We'll have that for you following a short break after the conclusion of this game. You can check out all of our other award winners on our YouTube page. That YouTube page is fantastic, by the way. You'll find all of our games a week after they air on that YouTube page. Just subscribe for free. Check out those games. Tommy Hefner in the game now. Kellen Putman for Crestview. Mohawk still working really hard, trying to double the ball. Nielsen with the open look in the corner. That ball almost hit the ceiling as it hits the rim. No good. Last touch by Crestview. Mohawk basketball with 1.49 to go. Nielsen and Etzler, I do believe they challenge each other in practice to see who can get the most arch on their shot. Speaking of all the different ways to view our programming, check out WOSN now streaming 24-7 online on Roku and Apple TV. Download the Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. A $100 donation allows you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wosn.tv to sign up. Evan Hart in the game now for Crestview. Braxton Leaf as well for the Warriors. Garrett Reinhardt in the game. Ben Bogner. Caleb Bish. Both coaches doing a great job of getting some of their younger players some action at the stroke. Ball goes back to Crestview. The NWC runner up by mere inches. He caught that game against Spencerville. Last second shot. Just missing for Crestview. A game that you and Scoop Cook did. A great call. Ludwig with the shot. Off the backboard, no good. Down comes Caleb Bish. Bish inside has it knocked away. Stay with. Mohawk underneath. Congratulations to a good career for Mohawk seniors Zayden Fry and AJ Hess, as well as Bryce Hannum. Returning a lot, though, from this season. Garrett Reinhardt with the bucket for the Warriors. 59 38 on the Loudix Jewelry scoreboard. Crestview. A minute to go until they punch their ticket to the regional final right here on March 10th against Marion Local. Should be a great matchup all the way to the rim, and Tommy Hefner puts it in. Hefner with a big smile, happy to score in the Stroh Center. Great experience, and again, you get your younger players here. You want them to get a taste of it and want to get more. Nice pass there by Connor Flood, the 6'6 sophomore finding Garrett Reinhardt for the bucket. 
61 to 40, 20 seconds on the clock. Crestview dribbles around. Will they try to score here? I'm never a fan of telling my second team to not try to score. Braxton Leith with a good look, comes up short. Five on the clock, Mohawk dribbles it up. This is Caleb Bish, she dribbles it out of bounds, point four on the clock. Looks like the referees tried to delay the whistle. Doesn't matter as the game comes to an end. Crestview with the big 61 to 40 victory, really controlled this game from opening tip. They did, an eight to seven first quarter, and then as we Watched, they took over a uh, tempo, able to get some good, easy looks by penetrating, and Mohawk just didn't have an answer. Unfortunately for A.J. Hess, I don't believe he scored tonight. A tough night for him, but I know that Coach Etzler, Hess was a focus. Uh, a lot of respect for him and this Mohawk basketball team, but Crestview comes away with the victory. Now it's time for a little Northwest Conference, Midwest Athletic Conference action. Friday night, you're down to the Elite Eight. A chance to punch your ticket to Mecca, University of Dayton Arena. Stay tuned after the break. The Stolle Insurance Hustle Award winner, your final score, 61 to 40 as you take a look at the Elite Eight in Division Four. Welcome back to the Stroh Center where your final score is Crestview 61, Mohawk 40. Crestview moves on to the regional final. Check out highlights of tonight's Stolle Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page. And check out highlights of tonight's winner as well. And tonight, truly a hustle award. You're right, Evan. Jared Harding comes off the bench, the super sub for Crestview, one of the most improved players in the program this year, and just makes his presence known at both ends. Offensively, he had a couple assists, had a rebound, stick back, and defensively, diving for loose balls, rebounding, getting some deflections, just to change the complexion of the game there at the end of the first quarter it was eight to seven. He comes in the game and you you notice him right away, Evan. Both ends of the floor and boom, it's an 18 to five quarter for Crestview, albeit not all attributed to Jared Harding, but he was the spark plug that got that engine turning for the Knights. Absolutely, congratulations to Jared Harding and congratulations to Crestview for moving on and they will face Marion Local in the regional final on Friday. Special thanks to the Bowling Green State University Athletic Department and Jamie Berenger for the hospitality tonight. I want to thank our sponsors one more time as well. Loudix Jewelry, Carry Insurance, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, Metzger Financial Services, and Laux Chiropractic. I want to thank our crew as well. Our director, Ben Reif, on replay, Megan Sherrick, and on the cameras, Cassidy Driscoll, Katen Henderson, Clay Jordan, Mia Waddle, and Tony Malenga. And as always, I want to thank you, the viewer, for tuning in to High School Basketball on WOSN. For Dave Bowen, I've been Evan Skilleter signing off. One more time, your final Crestview 61, Mohawk 40. Have a great night, and God bless.